Hello and welcome back to the wild, which is sunny and beautiful right now and there's birds flying above me and it's amazing. <laughs> Today's review is all about the Fujifilm 150 to 600 millimeter f-stop 5.6 to 8, this beautiful telephoto lens right here. So without further ado, let's crack on and let's talk about this lens. Over the last few weeks, about nearly a month, probably a month actually, I have been exploring everywhere. I have been to the southwest parts of Scotland, photographing badgers at night, doing sparrow hawks and tawny owls, to the Farn Islands, where I saw puffins and seals, the Island May, where I was looking at puffins again and gannets. Loads of different scenarios and techniques to use with this lens, like flash photography, tripod work, handheld on a boat, everything, you name it, I've taken it everywhere. And not only that, I've also tested it on two camera bodies, which is the Fujifilm X-T5 and the Fujifilm X-H2S. So I wanted to try them both as well to give a fair review. I've done a lot, I've seen a lot, I've captured a lot, and I really wanna share it all with you. And just to give you an idea, if you're looking at wildlife photography, how this compares and how it goes in the field of wildlife photography. Yeah, so let's get on with the first point. So firstly, this lens is solid. It's not going anywhere. I don't really know how you damage it. If you're damaging this, you must have thrown it at like a brick wall because it's just solid. Like it's it's just built well and you can dunk it. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's been great. Everything's fine. And having the internal cylinder, like where the focal length moves, I don't know the correct term for it, but everything happens internally. So when you go up and down the focal length range, 150, 600, all happens inside. And I loved this. And the simple reason for, it felt balanced. This feels balanced in the hand, especially when you're at the 600, it feels fine. As many times I shot filming and photos, just like this, obviously with the camera body attached, <laughs> just like this, but it felt balanced, it felt great. And with that, it's actually weather resistant as well. So not only have you got this extra protection having it internally, you've also got the housing on the outside is protected with your weather resistance as well, which is always great to have. I'm only a petite person and this is like the size of my body, it's the length of me. <laughs> but even for me being small, um, although strong, <laughs> um, I could carry it around just fine in my camera bag in hand. I tend to walk around carrying it like this, but it didn't feel too heavy. It didn't feel over like cumbersome when I'm taking pictures. Uh, it actually felt fine. I didn't really find an issue with it. Obviously that's very subjective, each your own, but for me it felt fine. And finally, all of the buttons and everything, especially when you're shooting like this, you can easily adjust the focal length, no problem. And you can easily adjust the focus ring. It's right there. It's like, cause it's fixed, nothing moves. You don't lose your placing of where everything is. It felt fine to use. And you've got your extra little features on here as well, where you can tilt uh, to go from landscape to portrait quite easily, which I always love that feature. You've got extra buttons at the top. If you want to just put custom buttons, which I didn't use, they're a bit redundant for me. You've got your ability to attach a filter, which this has on at the moment. And that's everything really. I think build wise and ease of use. It's fantastic. Like I said, I'm small. I've got little hands. This worked perfectly fine for me and it fit well on both the X-T5 and X-H2S. Both of them, it felt balanced and proportioned. It didn't feel out of place. Okay, so the next point I want to talk about is the, the big cheese. <laughs> the main reason why you want to watch this and know about it is how it performs its image quality and clarity and I have to say it was fantastic it really was and I'm really used to using the Fujifilm 100-400 millimeter which is still a fantastic lens do not get me wrong but what I noticed with the 150 to 600 was the step up or the elevation in the depth of clarity to an image and obviously you've got that extra reach as well by 200 millimeters but it's not even at that even at 150 it performed fantastically 
And the only way I can describe this is, is if I was taking a picture of a bird, for example, on the 150 to 600 millimeter, you've got the depth and the details of each little feather. And I've got images to show you this and footage as well. And you can just see the refinement to such a small scale. And it's so nice to see because it makes your subject and your picture seem more alive. It doesn't feel 2D, it feels three dimensional because you have that that depth to your subject, to your image. And that's just something I really did notice. Well, that's what you want. You don't just want sharpness and this block, meh. You want it to be refined, detailed and sharp. Those three merged together, not just one. And it really, really did that. It was so good, especially the badger hide. I was so like really, really impressed with the X-T5 and how it performed at night, obviously with a flash. I'd never done that before. And the pictures of the badgers, oh, they came out so good. And like, they were still far away, like further away, not far away, but further away. And that you could see like the little details in their eyes and their whiskers. And the same when I was on the boat on the um, Farn Islands, you could see the details in the whiskers and the seals. And I got my pictures back, I zoomed in. I was like, oh my word. And even in low light, drawing them into Lightroom and using denoise or whatever, because the ISO is higher, you still get the refinement in your images, even if they're noisy images, which I was really happy with because you don't have to think, oh, I've got an image that I can't use because it's not going to have, you know, the details, but it does, it still does. And I've got loads to show you with this. Overall, image quality, clarity, refinement of images has been top notch. And I'm thoroughly impressed with Fujifilm. Colors, tone, saturation, overall package that they provide with their lenses i love them and this is why i don't swap because i just think they're fantastic and this is no exception for this lens it's performed magically okay so the next point i want to discuss is about autofocus with the xt5 and the xh2s you can both do animal tracking and then you've got your continuous your single, whatever it is, and your manual focus. And I shot a lot in autofocus for this, just to the ease of it, in tracking, just to test it out, and the animal eye focus. And they both worked great. They really, really did. Uh, it's funny, back in December when I borrowed this uh, lens, I really struggled with the tracking. And I think it's just, it was so dark and gloomy. And I think this is the limitation for the focus is in dark or like contrasted areas, I think it gets a bit confused sometimes and it can waver in the focus. That's with the animal eye focus, but not like your tracking focus. But I have been at Badger Heights. I've seen tawny owls and sparrowhawks. I've been on a boat like this, trying to get seals and puffins. I was like, Ey! and puffins are fast. And I managed to get pictures of everything using the autofocus. I got puffins in flight, guillemots in flight, gannets in flight, tawny owls in flight <laughs> and everything. And I think the best thing I'd suggest is if you're gonna be doing things in flight is to use a burst, burst mode and your either animal tracking or your continuous focus with the tracking. I think there was a few occasions and it does happen with any camera. I like to see cameras that don't. <laughs> it does happen where you take a picture and it just didn't focus. But I think sometimes it just gets confused depending what you're shooting at. There's a picture I got a guillemot flying into water, but the camera focused on the water, not the bird itself. So there's been a few situations where this happened. And as well, in certain daylight, I don't know what happened. I was on the Isle of May and this happened on both the X-T5 and the X-H2S. And the only thing I could put it down to was the filter. And I think the filter caused distortion when I was focusing. So that's something to bear in mind as well, because once I took it off and I just tested it out afterwards as well, it worked fine. So there was a few occasions where I did have a bit like, ah, missed a shot, I missed a moment. But about probably 80% of the time, maybe 70%, 75% of the time, it was fantastic. There are those few occasions where just situations where it's just unique and the camera's like, I don't know what's going on. So, <laughs> but overall the focus was brilliant and I'm really happy with the shots that I got. And I hope you can see what I mean. And even at that badger hide with the eye tracking, you can see how crisp the eyes. I got crisp eyes of seals. It did fantastic. It really did. And again, both camera bodies, top marks. They did fantastic. Okay, so the next point to talk about is filming. And I have thoroughly enjoyed filming with the 150 to 600 millimeter. It actually enhanced my filming so much and made me want to go out more and just film anything. 
because the quality, the refinement of that image, the actual stability as well. Having this fixed cylinder has meant that it's just very well balanced in your hand. And when I was doing handheld stuff on the boat or on the Farn Islands and like you're trying to move stuff quickly, everything felt great. It was really good to shoot with. So I really enjoyed filming, especially in times they didn't have the tripod as well. And I'm really happy with the results and how they came out, the crispness, the sharpness, just the quality of the images I'm really really chuffed with so yeah I think for filming I'm over the moon I think you can get some fantastic shots with it I did filming on both the X-T5 and the X-H2S both performed brilliantly I did slow motion 4k 6k a mixture of everything and it came out great and editing afterwards was fun shooting an f-log um yeah it was just all great and I loved it it did so well at the filming and I just want to do more filming with it <laughs> I just want to take it everywhere and film everything it was good Okay, so the next point, I'm literally going to touch upon this because I will be having a full review discussion thing coming out about this whole topic, which is camera bodies with the 150 to 600 millimeter. I tested many different scenarios and the quality I got from both these cameras, I was really surprised with. And the X-T5 really actually pleasantly surprised me because it was fantastic. Uh, the crispness, the sharpness, the details, and both for filming and for stills was fantastic. I can't literally knock it. The one place where it did bother me, and uh, this did happen for both the cameras, was the writing speed when shooting in high burst shots, like 40 frames. And the reason this happened wasn't because of the cameras or the sensors, because I tested it. It happened because of my SD card, which is 200 megabits a second. So what I did was I tested it on this CF Express card in the X-H2S. It worked like butter. It was smooth, captured thousands of pictures as I was like testing it. <laughs> but um, the SD card couldn't keep up. So this is just something to bear in mind. You might need to buy a quite a sharp expensive um, SD card I haven't tested it with anything above 200 megabytes a second so you know that's one thing to bear in mind but the that's the only flaw I had with the X-T5 and the X-H2S both on the SD cards but with the CF Express it was fine but overall I was really chuffed and happy with the performance of this lens on both camera bodies I've given you all your examples I will show you more you make your mind up, see what you think, but it's just a proof in the pudding that you can use both with this lens and they work perfectly fine. And I was really, really chuffed. Okay, so the next point I'm gonna talk about is aperture and low light. And I wanted to make this point because I borrowed this lens back in December January time, start this year, and I just couldn't use it. It was too dark at that time. I was in Wales, it was raining lots, it was moody. I was trying to get pictures of wildlife, which I did, and I can try and find them and show you, but I just wasn't feeling it. I just couldn't do it. And I think this just was more a reflection of myself. Maybe I was just like, oh, this is too much. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so that's why I asked to borrow it again, and I have, and it's now performed great. But I think there is still that limitation on really dark days, which to be honest with you, I'm not gonna bother going out in the dark, in the rain, 
to take pictures of wildlife anyway. I don't think most wildlife is out at that time anyway, mostly hibernating. So it's fine, it doesn't matter. Um, but even in the low light situations, because I was worried about this having that f-stop 5.6 to 8, that is a narrow aperture. It's a big lens, narrow aperture. I was worried, but actually it performed brilliant in low light. I got pictures of the red squirrels, tawny owls, sparrowhawks in low light, fantastic. And the best bit is even in low light, if you have to use a higher ISO, which you will do if you need to compensate in other areas, you can draw this through into Lightroom and you've still got a usable, beautiful image at the end of it because you can use the denoise, it's fine. And it's perfectly natural, perfectly normal to use a higher, higher ISO when shooting with a telephoto lens, unless you're shooting with a prime telephoto, which I do not own. Many times I've had to do this and I think you just have to adjust your mindset. I'm used to shooting with prime lenses, like 23 mil, 33 mil, 56 mil. So for me, I'm used to having that lovely wide aperture and having the capability to open it wider if you need more light. But with this telephoto, you can't, and that's fine. That is a telephoto lens. A lot of them are like that. And with that in mind, it still did great. And also linking to the aperture and that narrow aperture, you still can get that lovely compression, that creamy background, and you can still get bokeh, which I have got a lot of with this lens. So if you're still looking for those beautiful bokeh images, creamy, dreamy background, you can still do it just fine with the 150 to 600 because I have done and I will show you them and <laughs> it works a dream. Okay, so that just leaves me to summarize the experience I've had over the last month with the Fujifilm 150 to 600 millimeter. And truth be told, I want to keep it. I want to buy it for myself. I can't afford it. <laughs> I can take it from Fuji and keep it. Um, I've just loved it. And it's mainly not from the perspective of getting beautiful photos and all these things, which we all go out our way for, fine, whatever. But the main thing for me is how much I've learned since using this um, in the different scenarios, shooting in the burst shots, um, shooting with flash, and how it's actually stirred a lot more creativity and learning in my photography. And I feel like over the last month, I have learned so much that I didn't know about, about my camera, about photography, about lenses, and it's been wonderful, it really has. And for that reason, that's why I wanna keep it because it's actually, again, added enhance my photography and I think any lens that you pick up and you feel like oh I'm growing with this that is a good lens it's a sign of a good lens and if I feel like I'm growing which I have and I hope you can see that in my photography how I'm even presenting this uh, vlog right now I've changed everything how I do because I just feel like it's it's enhanced everything and it's lifted it up which is great and that's how I feel about it it's been a challenge to learn loads of new stuff and that's what it's done and I've, I've loved it. I've loved every second of it. It's been brilliant. <laughs> and yes, I know it's an expensive bit of kit. I really do. That's why I haven't bought it yet myself. Um, and I most likely will have to trade in a lens to get this. But I think it's always worthwhile remembering. One, if it's something you enjoy, I, I think it's worth it. Two, lenses hold their value, especially lenses like this that don't come out all the time. And I trade in a lot of lenses to buy new ones and I get a lot of money back for my lenses because I look after them. And yeah, that's it. So you have to remember this. So look after your lenses and yeah, keep your boxes, keep your stuff sacked and all this, and then you can swap it for another lens in the future. So you don't always lose all your value and your money on the lenses you buy. For me, I've enjoyed this whole experience. I can't believe the pictures I've got with this. I've actually entered some into some competitions just to see how they go. I might end up getting some more printed. Um, I've entered some filming into competitions. It might not win anything, but that's how much I've adored using this. And it speaks highly of this lens and I really do want to get it myself. I think it's fantastic. Bar the few tweaks and issues I've had with like low light or the X-T5 keeping up to the writing speed with it. Bar all that, 
I think it's worth it. I really do and I've really enjoyed my time using it. On that note, I hope this review helps you in your decision with whatever you're doing. Keep an eye out for the review of the X-T5 and the X-H2S for wildlife photography and also the separate review for the X-T5. There's a lot coming up. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to drop them below and I will do my best to answer them. If I've missed off anything, I'll also put it below as well. <laughs> and I'll also put the links below for the wildlife hides I went to because I've done separate vlogs for them. So you can see more pictures and more of the whole experience of what happened with this lens when I was away. And yeah, on that note, stay you, stay awesome, stay wild, <laughs> stay free. And until next time, you incredible people, goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome back for another review. And today's review is all about how I love rolling in mud. Do you like my singing? Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> Move it over here so everyone can see his little beautiful button nugget face. Because one day I'm going to eat him. <laughs> the southeast parts of Scotland. Make sure I'm recording. Tour is back, back, back. Tell your friends, friends, friends. He ate all the cutie pies to become the cutest pie of them all. Guess who's back, guess who's back, guess who's back. What else did I want to say, guys? <laughs> so sorry. Oh, is it? Did I leave this on? <laughs> it's fantastic. It works well. It keeps me cool and I'm a happy boy.